Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to talk to you about how to diagnose an oven that heats but doesn't heat properly. We'll discuss some of the components that may be involved, where they're located, and how to test them. Now the first step of this diagnosis is to determine whether or not you have the proper power going to your range. Most applications will use either 208 volts AC or 240 volts AC to power the range. The easiest way to check if you have the proper power is to use the surface burners. Simply turn them onto a high setting, verify that they heat up properly, and if they do, you can assume that your power is correct. If the surface burners don't appear to be working properly, go back to your electrical panel and check your fuses or your breaker to see if the problem lies there. Now, if we've determined that we have a proper power going to our range, our next step will be to check the individual elements in the oven. All ranges use both the bake and broil elements in any cooking function. So the easiest way to test them is to simply pick a broil function on a dial type range, set it to broil, open the oven door, and then feel for any heat coming from that broil element. Use caution because it is fairly close to the front. To test the bake element, we'll set it to a bake function. Again, we'll just check for heat coming from that element. If it is warming up, you'll know that the element is working fine as well. On some modern ranges, we would do the same function. Select a broil function, open our door, and verify that we have heat coming from that broil element. On some of these ranges, the bake element is hidden. Again, you would still select a bake function and although it takes a little bit longer, you should feel some heat coming from the bottom of that oven pan. So if our visual inspection of the elements didn't indicate that they were defective, but they still don't heat, our next step is to do a continuity test on them. We'll begin by removing the back panel, we'll verify that the power to the range is turned off, obviously. And we also suggest that you take at least one of the wire terminals off of the element. Inspect those terminals, make sure that they are in good condition. And then using a multimeter set to a resistance scale, we'll check for continuity on that element. Typically, we should see somewhere between 50 and 15 ohms resistance. That indicates that that element is properly working. We'll do the same procedure on the bake element. And we verify that that element is okay as well. Now on manual control ranges such as this, if both the elements have passed their test but you still don't have the proper oven temperature, next we want to check the oven thermostat control. The control itself has a switch body that is located in the console and it next has a capillary tube with a temperature sensing bulb attached to that. That temperature sensing bulb sits along the wall inside of the oven, either on a side wall or on the ceiling, and that's used to monitor the temperature in the oven, and it sends that information to the control. You'll want to inspect that temperature sensing bulb to verify that it's not damaged, or that the capillary tube is not damaged, and also that it is mounted firmly in the clips that are holding it in place inside of the oven. If that appears normal, you may have a control that is out of calibration. Now, typically, you can adjust these plus or minus 25 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit simply by removing the control knob and then using a very small blade, flat blade screwdriver in through that center and adjust it one way or the other to compensate for those temperatures. If that does not resolve your issue, you can assume that the control is bad and you'll need to replace it. Our first step will be to turn the control to a preset temperature of around 300 degrees or so. And then on the back side of that control, we'll determine which of the contacts we need to test for continuity based on your model and the wiring diagram that comes with that. And we've confirmed that we do have continuity in the bake circuit. We'll next check the broil circuit. So again, we'll turn that control to a broil function. And again, using our multimeter, we'll test for continuity with the proper terminals. And we verified that that function works properly as well. 
On electronic control ranges, they use a device called a temp sensor to regulate the temperature in the oven. If your test for the bake and broil elements have passed, we may suspect that we have a problem with that temp sensor. It's located on the back wall of the oven, up close to the top in either the left or right rear corner. Now, although most electronic control ranges will display a fault code if we have a defective temp sensor, that's not always the case. However, we can test this component individually. They have a specific resistance related to the specific temperature of that temp sensor. Using a multimeter, we can test that resistance at room temperature and verify that it is working properly. Now to test our temp sensor, we've removed the back panel from the range. We've located the temp sensor and the harness connector. We're simply going to separate that harness connector. If your meter leads are too large to fit in the front side of that, you can flip it over and perhaps get in from the back side. If not, you can follow that harness all the way back to the control board. We could then disconnect that connector from the control board and do our measurements from that side. If you choose that method, make sure that you reconnect the small harness to your temp sensor to keep that wiring in circuit. Now, typically the resistance of that temp sensor at room temperature is about 1,050 to 1,100 ohms. So pick the appropriate scale on your multimeter. If it was significantly different from those numbers at room temperature, you may assume that the temp sensor is defective and is giving a false reading to the electronic control. Now, if the temp sensor is checked out okay, you may still have an issue that is related to the control itself. Most manufacturers have made a provision that you can offset that temperature of the oven by plus or minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So check your user guide to verify how to do that. It's simply a keypad function that you can either trick that oven into thinking it is warmer than it is or cooler than it is to compensate for it. Now to verify that we don't have a temperature offset programmed into our electronic range control, we'll follow the manufacturer's instructions. And this model asks to hold the bake function for about five seconds. And that will display any current offset that has been programmed in. So this shows that it is offset by minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can change that back to the original setting. Or we can increase it as well. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.